Well, a couple of things. First thing that kind of comes to mind right now is, uh, you know, uh, when I made this case, people were suggesting that perhaps I could have put lights on the inside to illuminate the, the ships. Uh, like I did on the case that's down in my workshop of the Titanic in Lusitania. There's lights in that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I could have, and, and it is, it's, it's kind of dark. And, and when I have a light, now maybe if I was to have a light from the, from the ceiling shining down at an angle like this, I wouldn't get reflection off the front of the glass. But this plexiglass, for some reason, seems to uh, uh, re reflect outside light really bad. I'm kind of disappointed in that. It doesn't seem to have the same properties as glass, real glass. Um, no, no, maybe it, maybe real glass would do the same thing if it was in this exact same location. I don't know, but I'm a little bit disappointed in this plexiglass for for that from from that standpoint. From the standpoint that it won't break, and uh, the reason I I know it won't break is because. <laughs> When I bought this sheet, I had to buy the, the entire four foot by eight foot sheet. So I didn't need that much and they, they cut it down to the size I needed it for my case. Uh, I'm, I'm wishing now that I'd gone the full four feet wide instead of the, I think it's 46 inches uh, that I calculated that I needed for the, to make the case that I wanted, but I, I should have gone a little bit bigger but I didn't. But anyway, that that's not what I'm... I, I get off the subject bad, don't I? Anyway, uh, I heard something outside and I thought maybe one of my neighbors had walked by and was uh, throwing a rock at the window or something. Anyway, uh, when I had the extra piece and I was taking it down into the basement, into the workshop, it accidentally slipped out of my fingers. And it sort of tumbled, cartwheeled, you might say, down the stairs. Well, the the corner of the of the thing hit the cement floor in the workshop. It never broke. It didn't. It didn't even dent. Now I I did get a bad scratch on it, where it sort of fell against one of my machines that I have down there at the bottom of the stairs. That's kind of too bad, but the scratch is kind of off to the side and I didn't lose the entire sheet and I'll probably never use it anyway. But you know, this stuff is kind of expensive, so you, you don't want to waste it. <clears throat> okay, now, now why am I sitting here? I mean, <laughs> all right. When I'm looking at the Bismarck like this, it, it actually looks really good. And I don't notice that I didn't use the a, a, a photo etch detailing kit of some brand to uh, to finish it off. It looks really good just the way it is. Now if I get real close and look at individual little items that make that possibly could have been done in photo etch, yes there there could have been a difference or there would be a difference. But just generally looking at it, it, it looks to me fantastic. It looks really good. Uh, I'm, and I, I think what got me onto this is that in, in yesterday's comments, uh, about three people said to the effect of, uh, I don't know, were they trying, were they trying to say photo etch is, is overrated? And, and, you know, sure, if you want to build a museum quality ship, yeah, go for the photo etch detailing kits. But if you want something that's, that's going to look really good and you're not going to drive yourself crazy unless you enjoy doing photo etch, um, build it out of the box. Just, just there's, a, there's enough photo etch that comes with these kits to, to drive you crazy. Um, yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Now I should have taken out a minute maybe to have set up my spotlight so that the the Bismarck shows up a little better here. <laughs> You're just getting a black silhouette of it. Uh, okay, so so that's about the uh, all I have to say here. I think, at least for right now, about 
whether or not you should do something at Photo Edge. Oh, thought of something. When we were doing the, the rigging on the Bismarck here, <clears throat> I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was using a, uh, 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 the plans that came with another model kit. I, I can't remember the name of it. It was a, and it was an Italian made kit. I don't think it's available anymore. It was also one 200 scale. Um, but they showed really, really well how the rigging went. Uh, whereas Trumpeter, in their instructions, it, you, you, they said nothing about the rigging. I was, that was kind of disappointing. Uh, so anyway, in this other kit, I don't think they used any photo etch. And when they showed a close-up of something, you could tell that things that would, might, maybe should have been really fine if they were to scale, or narrow, or skinny, or whatever you want to put it, they were on this, you might say, thick side. But when you saw the model in its entirety, I honestly thought it looked better than the Trumpeter models. Um, there, they had little things there that the Trumpeter kit didn't have. Now, mind you, if I memory serves, the kit was like, when, when it was available even, and I don't think it's available anymore, did I say that already? Uh, it, it was like two or three times as much here in Canada to get it here in Canada as, as the trumpeter kit. So, I mean, we're not really comparing apples with apples. We're comparing apples and oranges, if you know what I mean. Um, but what I am getting at is they didn't use any photo etch and they had a, a fantastic looking kit. And it's possible that some of you that are watching right now have built that kit. It's a, it was a, uh, I'll, I'll superimpose the name of it later in, uh, when I, uh, do this, uh, this, edit out this video. It was something like of Avante, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it was really good, but it had no photo etch. Now, one more thing while I'm thinking of it. About friend re requests in Facebook. I know I have a tendency to wear my heart on my sleeve. A lot of people know me really well uh, from from the, the the last two years of this series and then previous uh, previous series that I did down in my in my workshop uh, you know woodworking pen turning making a clock stuff like that you feel like you know me really well so you send me a friend request and in most cases I don't have a clue who you are and I Believe it or not, even though I am the sort of person that goes on social media and wears his heart on his sleeve, I'm really actually a, a loner. That might be hard to believe, but I'm, I'm a bit of a loner. And I'm very reluctant uh, to uh, uh, accept friend requests. Maybe one in one in a hundred I might accept. It would have to be something like somebody that I know, oh yeah, I remember you, we were friends in high school. You know, that sort of thing. And, and I don't think that's actually happened. But I'm just using that as an example. Uh, my, the friends that I have on Facebook, uh, they have to have a connection of some kind. Now I know there's the odd one in there that I don't really know personally, but I sort of feel like I know you personally, because maybe you've done a lot of YouTube videos or something like that, and I kinda, there is a bit of a connection. I know your personality, I, I know how you talk, I know what you sound like, I, I kind of feel like I know you. Uh, well, somebody like that I might accept as a Facebook friend. But I, I got another request uh, uh, yesterday, and I, I turned the guy down, and I felt really bad about that. Uh, yeah, I, I feel really bad about that. I, I don't like to turn people down. When they're, when they're reaching out to me and wanting when, when to be my friend, and I... I click uh, delete. <laughs> so if you've recently, or even in, even maybe in the, over the last six, seven years since I've been doing this kind of stuff, uh, you've been turned down. Well, please don't take it personal. Uh, <laughs> I'm a loner. I'm a loner. Now there was one more thing that I just thought of, and that is that quite often I'll use 
my wide angle lens and in this case I'm using the fisheye lens that should be pretty obvious but uh, sometimes I'll use lenses that make things look a lot different than they really are uh, for instance you by now you're used to the fact that when I slip on the macro lens you're going to see things in so close that you're not going to see them the way you would normally see them and they're going to look worse than they really are uh, sometimes I'll use the wide angle lens and it'll make stuff look a whole lot bigger than it really is. For instance, you're right there. And yet, if, if I hadn't have done that, you wouldn't realize that you're so close to me. It's just deceiving. Um, like my, my big backyard yesterday that somebody commented on, it's not that big. I was using my, wide, my wide, normal wide angle lens set to its widest angle. <laughs> So we were taking in about a 110 degree angle there. Uh, just a, just another thing. I just want to. I, I don't like to deceive. I, I like to keep it. I keep it real. Tell it like it is. And if it doesn't look like it is, I like to explain like I did just now. Okay, I got that off my chest. Now if I could just get this frog out of my throat. Anyway, you heard me uh, uh, remark about how I heard a noise outside and I had to check it out. Well, I heard another noise a few minutes ago, except it was the familiar rattle of my mailbox. And I've got an envelope here. I have not looked in it. It's actually from one of, uh, one of the viewers. <laughs> I'm begging you. I'm scared to open it, Jim. Hope you are feeling better. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jim, for that card. Well, I guess what that was all about is I was mentioning the other day how I had a stiff neck or something and well, I am better. <laughs> At least I think I am. Now I know at the end of yesterday's episode I was saying that we'll get the uh, paint off of this piece of photo etch. But you know I'm realizing that there's undoubtedly going to be other pieces that we're going to be getting here today that are also going to have paint on them. And we'll do that all at the same time. So let's see if we can find... Uh, all right, we got this one. We now need A44. Okay, here we are, number 44. Another very, very spindly little part. Somebody was asking me about this blade. I keep getting asked about this. They, people think that it's something that, uh, you know, that I bought. But it's actually just a number 18. Uh, Excel, I guess they call it these days, number 18 blade, and I've just reground it to the shape you see. I do believe I went through. Don't want to push too hard, I'm starting to bend that. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, see if we can get the other ones now. Come in from the other side. That one went better. And it looks like we need another little ladder here, A9. At least everything seems to be on the A sheet for this step. 
Yeah, I've concluded that uh, spraying these photo etch sheets, the way I did at least, was not a good idea. And we're looking for nine, right? Got a little Windex here on Tennessee Jim's mini Q-tip. In case you're wondering, that uh, card that we just looked at, that was from Tennessee Jim. Maybe I'll do this one that's going to block your vision first. I'm just going to go ahead and do it and get it done. You know what? I, I can't get this thing in there. <laughs> okay, we'll turn it around and do it later. I like it when they pop like that. I know for sure I've gone through. Now remember, nine upside down looks like six. Now we're going to look for four A15s. Now what are those white things coming down from the sky? My goodness, it can't be winter again already. <laughs> well, remember yesterday I said we could get snow again? Well, the nice thing is it won't stay. Now the 15s was not what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a solid, something solid. This is going to be hard to glue on, I can tell already, and I haven't even tried. Okay, sorry about this. trying to get as close to the part as I can because it's it's too delicate a piece to be able to sand off the you know the uh, connection if it's okay if I got them all now Yeah, they're loose. A3, with its very delicate little spindly braces that have to be somehow fastened on. Well, I think we've done stuff like this before. Okay, here we go, number three. It's a fairly large piece here. Almost don't need the macro lens. And I'm noticing that these two little braces here, they're just stuck down on the on the sticky plastic. There's no tabs. Okay, well here we go.
All right, and there's one right here. I'm just gonna get in your in your in your road for a moment. I'm gonna try it like this. And there's another one right here. Now, unless I've missed something, we got all the photo etch we need for step 50. And I do believe, in fact I know, we're going to have to cut this video off for today. So thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And maybe tomorrow we'll get this paint off of those pieces. In fact, I'm pretty sure we will. <laughs>